Helgeland. Helgeland. There you go. Um, thank you, because I didn't know that. Helgeland, Helgeland, Helgeland. Oh, my God. Gilderland, Helgeland. He thought that would be great for their chemistry, and, and all the actors felt like that really helped out. And then I think Shannon Sassamon was a DJ at Gwyneth Paltrow's brother's birthday party. Yeah, and he fought for her. Yeah, and he was like, that girl... Is and and but Heath really hadn't acted that much. He had been in, in a lot of theater in, in Australia at that point, and then moved out to L.A. But she hadn't done anything, literally nothing. Doesn't but feel like had, it. They had awesome chemistry. Yeah. And like literally, her her audition tape. They I saw a side by side today of her audition tape with the line that she said, which was the whole um the the second part where they're we're, we're there in the church in the in the in the wide view, not the. Not the horse yeah, yeah. trample with the bishop. And uh, it was like this. It's like she came in there cold, never acted before, and she just delivered this line. You got it. And, and Brian called called her himself to say, hey, I just wanted to say you're going to Prague for the next three months of filming. Yeah. And like, wow. Like, I, again, but that that's another change your star story. In the change your star story with a lead actor who had admitted prior to that that it changed his own st- It's like. This movie is for everybody. Plus, Alan Tudyk went on to uh, – everybody went on to great things. This movie was basically a, a blessing for everybody involved in it. This guy has worked with some some big names. Uh, also, actually, he worked with uh, Heath Ledger again in The Order. Oh, God, no, that was terrible. Yeah, very bad. But he, he also did – he directed Legend with Tom Hardy, two Tom Hardys. And he worked nice. on 42 with Chadwick Boseman. Oh, and he did boy, payback. It was so good. Yeah, so I mean, this guy's worked with some big names, so people must like. And he's also, I mean, he's an Oscar-nominated writer. He's amazing. But I don't know. He ca- even the little girl that uh, William talks to he's about the dad. Hey, where's my dad? Oh, he's blind, sir. Right, so th- he ca- he was at looking for boys or girls, and he said that boys were like he's blind, and then the girls were like he's blind, sir. And so he cast a girl, a little girl, to be that role. Like the guy just had a good eye for casting. And it, and it paid off, and it's created this movie that I love, and I'm very happy to talk about. You know, it's it's see that's that's why I have to give it that 74 though, because in my heart I want to give it all the points. Yeah. All the points, and I man. I, I'm gonna get. I'd give it an 82. Okay, uh, I, I would say 74 to 82 with a plus minus in there. Yeah, that's 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 perfect. There's a lot of meat on the bone. Also, I I come into movies. I think the job of, of critics and people who call themselves critics, you have to remain objective. So if you see marketing for a film, you have to understand that this is marketing meant to sell the movie. Many times the directors don't sure. cut their yeah. trailers. It's very rare for a director to have full creative control of their trailers. So if you see a marketing company marketing a movie and you expect that movie and it's not that movie, it's not the movie's fault. It's marketing's fault. So I guess when I'm watching this old tiny movie and then queen kicks in objectively i'm thinking this is different this is fun right i'm not thinking this sucks so i guess i'm taking it that way there's a lot of meat on the bones i do get that and i can get how the music kind of can be kind of i don't know it could throw people out there but i guess i give it an 82 mainly because how fully fleshed out the characters are and how Yeah. yeah you know who they are almost immediately and that, what you, yeah, you do. That you said, for me yeah, you said that. is is in the 80s. I'm just gonna give it an 82, 82, because I'm gonna try to be objective. I don't know. Uh, I don't even know if that's hot. Like, you know, what <laughs> you know, for me, let's say you don't like something, sure, but you try something you don't like, and you're like, this is the best of this, but I don't like it. So like that, that was a lot of Korean seafood. Yeah, that I've tried. <laughs> so you're thinking to yourself, I don't like, I don't like pizza but that pizza i just ate was the best pizza i I ever had would you give it a one star because overall you don't like pizza or would you give it five stars because it was the best pizza you ever had even though you didn't really like it that much see that's why i'm giving it a 74 percent because i'm taking a quarter off from my absolute hate but giving you the maximum score i've got left for the best one you can be (laughs) there it is (laughs) But yeah, no, well, listen, man, thank you for joining me. I, I had a lot of fun talking about this movie. I had a lot of fun living in this movie, understanding it. And also, I recommend everyone listening to this, listen to the commentary. You won't mm-hmm. learn too many behind-the-scenes facts, but the rapport between the director and Paul Bettany is very funny, and it's super dry. And while yeah. we were listening, Megan just kept going, idiots, because they say the dumbest stuff very dryly. Like, just, you know, Thin Lizzy had yeah that was a 13th century song it was right so it's very fun it's a it's a breeze also the extras 
and we talked about that, James. It's really neat to see how they film this. It's a mm-hmm. very interesting look into the movie. So you can get the DVD for five bucks, pick it up, watch the extras, listen to the commentary. I think it'll help you understand the movie more. And also, in terms of a writer, I think this is a good movie to maybe show people because there's way – it's too long, but it's fully formed. So it's a really good exercising in screenplay writing. You should talk to your class or maybe have them re-edit it. Or I, I don't know. I, uh, I, I think, that's a good one. That's a good one, Mark. Yeah. I, I think it's a it's a really – it's written well. It's, it's likable. I don't know. Maybe just use it as a teaching moment for someone or just to understand it or just – Get it to enjoy it. It's an enjoyable movie, but I'm glad we got to talk about this, and I'm glad you recommended it. You said, hey, let's do Night's Tale. I went, yeah. That was an easy sell. Oh, man. That's, man, movies are great. Talking to you is great. I have so much fun doing this. Thank you for bringing me on yeah. again. Our next and, one will be uh, good. I'll let you think about it for a little bit and see what your next one wants to, is going to be. Oh, man. It's uh, whew. There's so many, my friend. Well, I'll marinate on that. But uh, Norbert, thank you once Norbert again, Mark. just sent me a list of like twelve movies. I can't wait to talk about them. <laughs> oh, I like to I like to think about one that I really want to talk about. I'll, I'll space them out, man, because yeah. you know when you get a lot to talk about, when when you know, I just love movies that are fun. Man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we got Dick Tracy and Night's Tale so far. It's an interesting That's combo. A great pedigree, though. I love it. These are movies that mean a lot to me. You know the the yeah. So. Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> it's easier for me to talk about movies that other people love because it just makes my job easier. <laughs> and I, honestly, man, I, I don't – I like that we talk about movies we like and still try to remain somewhat ob- objective. But I just – I don't know. I can't I, – I hate dunking on movies. I don't want to pick a movie I hate to talk about how much I hate it because then I just seem pompous. So I love just yeah. sharing my love. So, so uh, you know, right, right before we end then, um, so my buddy used to work for this uh, website back in 2002 called the Gaming Intelligence Agency. And so he used to get to do reviews and then send him copies of games, but, like, I had the system, and, like, he bought some other stuff. And so uh, we started writing reviews together, but, but one of the best reviews he ever wrote was for this horrible Army of the Dead game. And, like, we got the copy. It was free. We went into it, like, we're just going to play this. And we played it, and it was just objectively a very bad game. You know how much fun writing that article was? Because you're trying to be objective. But there's no way that you can't impart comedy on that because objectively, this is a terrible thing. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And it's it's really great when you get gifts like that. You know, I, yeah, cherry picking is it's kind of a you know double-edged sword there. It, it, it's nice when you can go into it and say, you know, this is something that I love. It's got flaws. I'm not going to defend the flaws, but I will tell you the highlights of it. Can I tell you something, though? These are movies. So I don't think anybody should have to defend liking a movie. I don't. Mm-mm, mm-mm. And, I, I mean, that's the culture we live in, for sure. That's what, yeah. But this is such an objective thing, and we're all so different. Like, just You and I could be neighbors, but b- between our parents, our income, our our situations, our our mental states – Different movies connect differently with us. And so, uh, yeah, maybe when I was young, I was like, you haven't seen 2001? Poor. But now it's, I don't know. I, I, yeah, you know, I want to get rid of that stigma. You go through periods. I go through this with – oh, you broke up there. <laughs> oh, here. Yeah, uh, just say I go through periods. You know, I think that's an important message for the times right now, though, is, is it, it, everything is very Venn diagramming, and but, but everyone – wants to pretend like we're these two circles out here that somehow there's other different bubble everything overlaps you know and 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 music and literature and movies you know comedy these are things that that there is an overlap there is a commonality between us and you know something like talking about movies accentuates some of those commonalities so something the, the thread that keeps us all together that's what we need to really focus on i think yeah we got to heal yeah. You know, we got to heal. And, and who doesn't like to laugh? Who doesn't like to see something beautiful or hear something beautiful? We all have that in common. We need to get out of this mindset of different and realize how great everything is together. Amen. I love it. All right. So, hey, thank you for joining me, James. Always a pleasure, my friend, Mark. I right. can't wait to do it again. All right. So for me, Mark Hoffmeyer, and for James Mueller. Good. I got it. Okay, good. Mueller, this is Movie Stones of Flicks. We'll see you next week. I got uh, so into the first introduction, I called you Mula. I didn't say Mula. I messed up. Oh, man. It's, it's, it's all good.